So just constantly running to him as our strong tower, our refuge. So that's what I've been learning. Amen, amen, amen. Well, with that being said, can I do a quick prayer, y'all? We'll drive right into worship. All right, Father God, we thank you. We thank you that you are our fortress. We thank you that even in the midst of all the chaos, of all the strife, of all the struggling that we go through every day, we can be still and know that you are God. You are still God. You are still good. You are still on the throne. You are still in control. In your name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. And why do we worship New Season? Because God inhabits the praises of his people. Let's worship, y'all. of this love I know it's only just begun and we will see greater things to come and I've heard the wonders of his grace and I've seen his power on display from age to age it's still the same and we'll see greater in your name
so much more you want to do. Oh, yeah, there's more you want to do. Yeah, there's more you want to do. Oh, we're ready for more. Come on. There's more you want to do. So much more you want to do. There's more you want to do. Oh, God, so open up the floodgates, Lord. There's more you want to do. Open up the heavens. Oh, let it rain down. There's more you want to do. So come on, come on in. So come on, come on in. So come on, come on in. And go the flow. So come on, come on in. So come on, come on in. So come on, come on in. So come on, come on. 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 and set me free, wrote me and gave me the victory, I got a reason, a reason to praise, I can't forget what my eyes have seen, what seemed impossible I believe, looked at my life, we got history, I got a reason, a reason to praise, hallelujah, I won't let it Oh, my shackles and set me free. Wrote me and gave me a 
As most of you know, this is the time of service where, and I, and I tend to say this every time, but I mean it. We still believe in prayer over here, all right? Am I the only one? We still believe in the power of the name of Jesus. Am I the only one? And we are a church committed to that. So this is a time where we want to open up this altar space. If you find yourself here this morning and you are in need of something, if you find yourself here this morning and you are in need of prayer, in need of a healing, of a breakthrough, of a miracle, of just an intervention from God in your life, Feel free to make your way up to the front. We have our elders up here who are ready and willing to come in agreement with your request, with what you need. Amen? Amen. So during this time, we're going to continue to worship, but just make your, make your way up. Let them know what your prayer request is, and these men and women will pray with you. Jesus, we just want to say that we love you. Come on, can we just open up our mouths and say, Jesus, we love you. We love you, Jesus. For everything you've done and everything you do, we respond to your goodness with love and we echo it back to you, Jesus. We love you. Let this be a house of love. Oh, where we lavish our love on you. And we love you, and we can't get enough, all this is for you, Jesus, oh Jesus.
today All of this is for you And all this is for you Jesus Oh my love, oh my love, oh my love You can have it all Oh my love, oh my love, oh my love You can have it all Come before the altar. We bring our prize, we bring our treasures. Oh, we lavish them on you. We lay down our crowns before you. Oh, we crown you holy. We crown you holy. We crown you righteous. We crown you King of Kings, oh, and the angels cry, 
you believe it in all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all oh your name your name your name is the highest your name is the great
a holy God. Lift up your hands. He is a holy God. He is a holy God. He is a holy God. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lamb that was slain. Holy is the Lord. Holy forever. Holy forever. Holy forever. I sense the Lord in this place. First Thessalonians 5.23 says, if we submit fully to him, he, he, we submit to him, the finished work of Christ, he will make us holy, mind, body, soul. Another version would read mind, body, soul, and spirit completely. And then verse 24 says, you don't even need to worry because he who called you is faithful to do it. He is, that's just, wow. In the finished work of Christ. Real quick, just can you lift up your hands, come in agreement? Matthew 18, 19. We come in agreement over anything in the name of Jesus. We have a number of, of, our, of our babies right now, little babies, recently born babies related to this house that are in, in the intensive care unit, the NATO intensive care unit as we speak. So just in the name of Jesus, we come in agreement. We're doing it right now. We're coming in agreement. Oh God, show up show up now we're asking you to show up these are your babies created in your image show us your glory show us your glory show us your glory show us your glory do it right now by the authority of the name of jesus let's take advantage of this matthew 18 19 coming in agreement moment <sighs> yesterday we've never seen this before by the way we've never seen this before so Proxy wars are different from direct assaults. The, the nation of Iran uh, just assaulted, attacked Israel directly, not through their proxies. Usually they go through Hamas and Hezbollah. This time they went, we're gonna go directly. That's a declaration, a de facto declaration of war. And they, there was an attack and by the grace of God, the, the intervention and just the prayer of the saints and, and with the help of America and other allies, it, it, 
de minimis damage, uh, like the, the attack never happened. Not, notwithstanding, there, there is this stirring up, brewing of, of tension in the Middle East. This is beyond a geopolitical issue. In this church, we don't do politics. We do, we do the fact we're citizens of the kingdom, but we're cognizant of the fact that what's happening in the Middle East is beyond geopolitical strife. There are spiritual and prophetic ramifications to what's happening in the Middle East. Without a doubt. And so we, I want Dr. Garza, just, can you all just, can you do me a favor, please? Hold, hold hands. Just hold hands, Dr. Garza. Yeah. Let's just pray for yeah. hedge, you, you Just pray for Israel, hedge of protection. Pray for the protection of the innocent and for peace in the Middle East. Let's yeah. pray in the name of Jesus. Yes, and we're going to add just one more little thing because I believe there's a spiritual connection to Israel. And I believe some of us in this room have had what would be like drone attacks in our lives. So if you're here, and we're not only going to pray for Israel, but if you're here and you've been attacked in different ways, in what people may even say creative ways, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, those kinds of attacks, we're going to pray for Israel, and we believe that you're going to be delivered. You're going to be set free, that God's going to bring protection out of nowhere on your behalf as well. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, God, we are not disconnected from your plan, from your kingdom. We are not disconnected from your overall will. We are intimately connected, God. Your word says we're grafted in. And so, God, we pray for the people of Israel. We do pray for the nation of Israel. We pray for understanding and wisdom. Of course, we pray for peace. We pray for your will to be done. We pray for protection. We thank you for what you've already protected. But, God, we do pray that you would intervene, not withstanding, Lord, that we know that you're coming again for your church. And we know that the signs are all leading to the same thing, that you are coming. And God, I pray for the nation, but I also pray for the people that have been grafted in. We believers, some of us in this room that have been attacked out of nowhere, Lord, that you would provide a hedge of protection over everyone. There are people in this room that are ill right now, that are sick right now. They feel like they've had an attack out of nowhere. Lord, you will stand on their behalf. You will stand on their behalf. You are seated on your throne, but you will stand up for your kids, Lord. So we pray right now, Lord, for your hand of protection, your hand of healing, your hand of peace in our homes, in our families, in our church. And God, let your kingdom come and let your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. If you believe it is done, give him your best praise expression right here. Go sit. You're going to be seated for the word here for a second, but... What, what we're doing, we're doing all the things because of the special program we have. Welcome to new season. High five your neighbor. Tell them welcome to new season. Go around, love on two different people. Tell them welcome to new season. Welcome to new season. Welcome to new season. Welcome to new season. Love on someone. Welcome to new season. If you're here for the first time, if you're here for the first time, right there where you're at, lift up your hand. Raise your hand if you're here for the first time. If you're here for the first time, welcome to you. Give it up for all of our first timers. <laughs> Wonderful. We're glad to have you here. Bring the house that lights down a little bit here for the camera purposes. But uh, if you're here for the first time, we have a book, coffee, uh, and maybe a brand new car. The car is imaginary, but it's, the coffee and the book are legitimate and they are real. <laughs> It, right when you exit to the right-hand side, we have a Connect Lounge. We really want to greet you and give you these free gifts, but we want to bless you indeed. Quickly, let, take out your phones, please, your iPhones, your Androids, whatever you have. Take out your phones. We're going to read a verse. We're going to get into Mama Cindy here in a second. We're going to release her to just, we have multiple services. If you're here for the first time, this is the first service of three on Sunday. We're a multi-ethnic, Christ-centered, Bible-based, spirit-empowered, multi-generational church that believes that God is still moving today. And we believe the church is anointed to transform the world with the gospel of Christ, advancing the kingdom of heaven. That's who we are as new season. So let's read this verse together, all of us. Ready? Honor.
We're gonna read, we'll do that one more time. Let's go back. Go back to that previous version, please. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. You honor God with your wealth, with the best part of everything. You, that's God's word. How many believe his promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus? How many believe that God we serve never lies? He is faithful to keep his promises. Hebrews 10, 23. Every single day, in every circumstance, there's a verse that I quote, probably on a daily basis, if not close to. Psalm 91, verse four. Your faithful promises are my armor and my protection. My protection. This is one of God's promises. You give him your best from every aspect of your life and you will experience overflow. Let me declare by faith in Jesus' name, as Pastor Nick Garza, Dr. Garza was referencing, some of y'all have been recently going through certain issues. In Jesus' name, let this be the week you go from overwhelmed to overflow. If you, you receive that for you, Steve. Matter of fact, if you need that, get up on your feet. If you need to go from overwhelmed to overflow, you've been overwhelmed with different things. Overwhelmed to overflow. This is it. If you don't need it, you're good. Be you, boo. But if you need it, if you need it, right there where you're at as you stand with me, take out your phones. Scan that, Q, scan that QR code right now. We're going to give. We're going to give God through a spirit of generosity, no coercion, no manipulation. We give because we love him. We give because God so loved the world that what? So when you love you, and that's how we change the world. One little side note, lower the music just a little bit. This church gives to causes in the Middle East. We're part of something called FIRM, the Fellowship of Israel Related Ministries. And we give a portion of our income for that very purpose. So in light of what just happened in the past, transpired in the past 24 hours, our giving will literally help ministries out there in the Middle East, advancing the kingdom of heaven, exalting the Messiah, Yeshua, who is Jesus Christ. That's what we're doing. So your giving is literally changing the world. If you're giving right now, if you're not giving, just look at your neighbor and tell them, mm. but if you are giving, if you, just make awkward noises, I promise you. It's just gonna be, the ushers will pass by and lay hands on you again. But yeah, that's right, Pastor. That's why I tell them, yeah. Lift up, lift up your phones. And if you have an envelope, if you need an envelope, Pastor Sam, I don't use, I don't give through my phones. I don't trust the algorithm of the Antichrist. <laughs> then I, I, I hear you. So we have envelopes for you. Pastor Sam, I don't give through envelopes. I just give cash. I hear you. There's buckets up here. And Pastor Sam, I just give in my mind. I don't hear you. So, right. <laughs> Lift them up. I'm here all week. Lift them up real quick. Heavenly Father, with your joy, we make jokes and we fellowship, but we know, globally speaking, and we're living in some serious times, our giving will change the world because we give in the name of Jesus. We give with a spirit of generosity. We give undergirded by your promises. We give our best. We're not giving you leftovers and expecting overflow. We're giving you our best today. Our offerings, our giving, we're giving you not because we have to. We give you because we love you and we want to. And Lord, that generosity will provoke us to give a lot more than what they used to give even in the past. We're going to change the world through our giving. Lord, thank you. Use it multiplied exponentially for the advancement of your kingdom and the exalting of the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Now, we're going to hurry because Mama Cindy is looking at me going like, Sammy, hurry up. <clears throat> I know her well. So all you're going to do is come up here and you're just going to go overflow. If you're giving right now and you want to hit the stage like we do every Sunday, come up here and just say overflow. Go with your giving. Overflow. Just say overflow. Release that word. Overflow. Your praise. 
please stand with me if you can. If you have the physical ability to stand with me, thank you. Thank you for your, your due deference. Thank you for that. We have a special guest, a special guest. I call her Mama Cindy. She's known me since I was in my 20s, which was last year in my mind. Mm -hmm. Strange place, my mind. And she's Mama Cindy to us, to the Rodriguez family. She's been speaking into me before I was pastoring, before I was leading a, 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 a movement and so forth and all God ordained. But she is an integral part of my narrative. From Hollywood, I had no inclination for Hollywood. No intention to ever work in, I could even spell Hollywood. She comes in years ago and says, Sammy, the Lord says, oh, Hollywood. And then I get a call from Paramount Studios and the rest is history. Heard the accuracy of the prophetic. I need to explain this. Our church is very young. This service is a little bit older than the 12 o'clock. Our 12 o'clock is standing room only and the average age is 32. So I need to explain this. God still speaks today. He speaks today via the conduit of two primary facilitative platforms, his word and his spirit. So the Holy Spirit speaks today through the word, but through people. These are the gifts of the spirit, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the gift of faith, the gifts of healing, the gift of miracles, tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, and discernment. These are the gifts of the spirit. Mama Cindy, Dr. Cindy Jacobs, by the way, is a prophetic voice like no other. She has spoken into nations, leadership, families, communities. Unbelievable. She is a conduit of heaven. God speaks to her, through her, to our generations. So I want you to help me honor new season, Dr. Cindy Jacobs. Let me just prophesy. Um, <laughs> I have a very short time frame. Uh, this is what the Lord says to you, Pastor Sam. Hollywood 2.0. What does this mean? This means Bollywood in India. This means film festivals in France, the Cannes, and, and London. And the Lord says, I will open these doors because you have been faithful and you have not gotten in pride over the doors I opened and the favor I gave you. And the Lord says, but the nations are a next step for you. I'm gonna do it supernaturally. And the Lord says to you, there is going to be such a revival because I gave you this for revival and reformation. And so the Lord says that evangelist part of your heart knows I gave you this favor for souls. So the Lord says behind the scenes, and I haven't talked to you about this, but you have been telling people about Jesus. And there's some that are pre-Christian and they're very close to the kingdom of God even now. And people are gonna be surprised in the news as they boldly proclaim Jesus. And the Lord says, you have suffered persecution at times, even from the church, in quotes. <laughs> and the Lord says, just shake it off. <laughs> shake it off they're jealous they're mean they're idiots at times did I say that is that prophetic I don't know anyway maybe it's a mama part of me anyway but the Lord says no I am getting ready to open more award winning opportunities for you and the Lord says you are the bridge 
between uh, what we would call the sacred community and the church. But the Lord says, I'm showing you how to do church in a different way. And the Lord says to you and Pastor Ava, this building is too small. And you know that. But the Lord says, I have a plan to give you a building that is twice this size. I have a plan for children's space. Because there's going to be many, many little children running around here. I have a plan for a dedicated youth space. And I have a plan for the studio that is needed. So the Lord says, get ready for all of these things. The Lord says, come up higher and I will show you what to do and how. And the Lord says, for your business people in the church, I am going to even loose, even from now, a creativity upon you, says the Lord. I'm going to give you ideas that you know didn't come from you. I'm going to give you the capital investors. I am going to begin to help the little ones even become great ones. For there is an entrepreneurial spirit that I have placed in this church. And the Lord says, look, even to the like 18, 19, 20-year-olds, the Lord says there will be a tech revival. Now, what does this mean? Not only in their for their souls, but in uh, the tech industry. There's going to be new ideas given. And the Lord says some will be given by dreams. Some will be given by visions. And the Lord says, I'm bringing groups of people here who are reformers. I'm bringing groups of people here that will work together. And the Lord says, even I'm bringing young people. But the Lord says, I will raise up a wave of evangelists that are going to touch the universities from this house, says the Lord. And the Lord says, so get ready to do church a different way. Get ready to know that I have called you to be a bridge builder. I have called you to eliminate racism. I have called you to stand. I have made you a church of many colors. And from it, I'm going to release wisdom and grace. And the Lord says, in the coming day, this will be needed because there's shaking coming. But the Lord says, do not fear the shaking because I am your solid rock, says the Lord. Amen. 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 Isn't it good to know he's a solid rock? I mean, we cannot be shaken. You know, we, we have a 50-state prayer network, and we have 14 regions of America for this prayer network. And they just, they're working so hard. I mean, they're, they're praying their little hearts out. And I give them these outrageous assignments. Um, for instance, when the Silicon Valley Bank went down, uh, the Lord spoke to me, and he said, now, I want you to send them to pray at every bank in America to stabilize the economy, Federal Reserve Banks, and they did. And you know what? Not one other bank collapsed. So there's a lot of things that they're watchmen, and they're watching, and we're thankful for that. I want to just give these two little gifts. One, uh, Pastor Sam, Reformers Arise, I added sections on this on Reformation and Revival. And Pastor Ava, give that to her, please. And that's this essential guide to the prophetic. You know, it's like, there's a, there, I tell you what, the prophetic right now, can I say, it's kind of like the Wild West. You know, I, I'm, I'm watching this stuff and I'm going, oh, Lord, this one thinks everybody's going to die on the eclipse, and I'm not getting anything. I go, either I am not a prophet at all, you know, because I'm not getting a word that anything's going to happen, you know. And so uh, yeah, I've kind of been praying, what do I do about the wild west of social media, you know, scaring this, everybody spitless. That's a Texas saying. Anyway, I'm from Dallas, you know. But 
you know, we do need to pray and we are in a precarious season. So we don't want to have our head in the sand either. And we want to be prepared and, and know that, you know, the spirit of anarchy is trying to break out here and there. But the good news is the Lord is our sun and our shield. And he is our protector. So we do not need to be afraid. Now, the message I have given this morning, it kind of has a wild name. The message name is Don't Run From Jezebel. Now, not all of you may know who Jezebel was in the B-I-B-L-E, okay? But Jezebel was a very, very bad woman. And she was a queen and she married this guy Ahab and she made him bad too. Don't marry the wrong one, I'm telling you. Don't do that. So we're going to take, and because of the shortness of time, I'm, I'm not going to read through all the scripture, but kind of speak you through it. First Kings 21, uh, 1 through 16 and 25. I'll read a little. And it came to pass of these things, Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel next to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. Ahab spoke to Naboth saying, give me your vineyard and I may have a vegetable garden because it's near next to my house. I'll give you a vineyard better. It seems good. I will give you worth its money. Naboth said, the Lord forbid I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. I want to say to you, there are things God has given you. There's things God has given to your family. There's things God has given to a nation like our position on Israel, some of the things we were doing. But there are times when Satan wants to take away what God has given us. Have you ever noticed that we're in a battle? If you haven't, are you breathing today? <laughs> because there is a warfare. And you remember the Bible says Satan comes to what? Steal? kill and destroy. That is his job's description. And what's the rest of it say? But I came to give life and life more abundantly. So it's God's will that we have abundance. Now I want to say to you, Satan is not dumb. We think he is, but he's actually very sly. And so we need to understand that he will lay traps for us and that he will try to do things to take us out. But sometimes we don't understand what is going on. So we see the demonic plan that Jezebel, wicked Jesse, came up with was that she wrote letters in the king's name and she called wicked people to proclaim a fast and see Naboth with high honor. Now, what was this? You see, I know you can't believe it, but there are people who are Satanists and witches who do unholy fasting. And I just want to say this is pertinent to this church because I feel you've been targeted and I think they're coming against your babies. And so that should make us mad. And we should make the devil pay and run away and put an X on the door of this church and say, you are never touching our babies again. It's time we got to rise up. So I remember one time, and I think I put this in my first book, Possessing the Gates of the Enemy. Uh, my mentor, Peter Wagner, showed me a letter. And in this letter there was a pastor flying on a plane and the man next to him appeared to be praying. So he said to this man, he said, oh, I see you're a Christian. I'm a pastor. And the man said, oh no, you've got it wrong. You've got it wrong. I'm a Satanist. And this week we are targeting and naming pastors. We are targeting these pastors in these churches. We're targeting that the pastors will fall in sin and for the destruction of their churches. And I need to get back to work. Hell's intercession. Now, I want to say to you 
This should not make us make us afraid because we have authority through the name of Jesus. But we need to watch and see and understand. We can't be lazy in our watching these days. We have got to stay on tune. We've got to guard our families. We have to guard our church. And in this church, we have to guard our babies, right? The babies are being attacked. Now, one baby, you might think, uh, two. But listen, this is, this is bad. I, Father, I pray for the babies of the church that are in the NICU and the different ones. That are, and we bind and we take authority over you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. We say we bind the spirit of death in Jesus' name. We speak life to those babies. We speak healing to those babies. And we speak health to those babies. I remember another time I was in Vancouver, British Columbia with a friend and I was preaching up there and she told, my friend told me a story. She said she led a Satanist to the Lord and he began to weep and he wept and he said, I feel so badly because I drove down to the Seattle area and I planted a cult objects in, in all of these churches for the destruction of the pastor and the breakup of their marriages. Now listen, we can either see everything as a demon or we ignore it and we don't understand that, they, that there's power then they're trying to target us. This is why you've got to pray for your pastors every day because they're bigger targets and their families. And so anyway... Um, so they drove down to Seattle and they went and they dug up these fetishes. And, and I have a book called Deliver Us from Evil about how to break curses, witchcraft, and all these things. It, it's on Amazon. But, but and, and I knew those churches and I knew those pastors had fallen. So we've got to live a clean life, make sure there's nothing in there that the devil can get his foothold in. And so I remember that we have to learn how to deal with the occult if needed. One time I was preaching in Argentina, uh, in the south of Argentina, and uh, uh, they told me before I went in, look, they said, Carlos Anacondia came. He couldn't do anything. There was 50. Don't think anybody's coming to your meeting. That's like, is this supposed to give me faith, you know? And so, but we went, it was packed. The theater, and I watched this guy flopping up and down, kind of being brought up from the back. And, uh, uh, and many times these people have to get delivered before they even can say the words Jesus. So they took him to the back. And they cast out spirits from him. And he said his father was a Mukumba priest. And, you know, it's a mix of African and um, Brazilian witchcraft. But cut open his son in the shape of a cross, poured blood in. Is this, maybe this is too much for Sunday morning. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, and, and he threw up a ball of living hair. And he got delivered and he gave his life to Jesus. So... You know, don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. One time, there was a pastor in Argentina that um, uh, uh, was called upon by the local football, you know, soccer team, and they were losing and losing and losing. And he walked up and down that field and he said, dig here, and they dug up a fetish. And he destroyed it, and they began to win. Okay, so we don't want to be ignorant. Now, in this passage, there's something we cannot overlook. And this is, what is this passage? Say, it says, the Jezebel said, set Naboth with high honor. What does that mean? Well, the point is, we have to understand that Satan will try to build a stronghold right next to our strengths more than our weakness. Okay, so, you know, uh, I think Naboth loving, you know, his family and just say, wow, you know, this is not only for me, my whole family, but that's how she got him because she hired people to lie and she got his vineyard and he died. Now we know historically, and I don't have time to teach it, but later on God vindicated, vindicated Naboth 
and Jezebel was taken down. But I want to say to you that in this season, there are robbing spirits under the influence of Jezebel, and they want to take believers down. And I, what are the characteristics of Jezebel? Number one, uses power and influence to stir up legal and political powers against God's people. Number two, persecutes Christians. Number three, uses the occult. And, and I want to say number four, with, will bring great mental pressure against you. Mentally, physically, to try to stop you from standing and doing what you should do. Satan wants to wear you down. He wants to tell you Christianity doesn't work. This isn't doing anything. All the, you know, I, I'm just hearing words being spoken to some of you this morning. But I want you to stand up to Jezebel and say, I bind and take authority over you. I am not running from you, Jezebel. Jesse, you are getting out of here right now. You are not touching me, my family my finances and you are not touching the children of this church and you are not touching my nation say no to Jezebel and father I pray over those whose minds have been affected through Jezebel and I bind the depression and I bind the suicide and I bury the anxiety in the name of Jesus and we say the truth is Jezebel you better run out of here we are resisting you right now, and you will flee. Go! Go! Hallelujah. It's time to rise up. Daniel 7, 25 and 27. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High. Shall persecute the saints of the Most High and intend to change times and laws. See, just when you're going to have your breakthrough, just when that great thing is going to happen, what happens is this word persecute means to mentally distress you. So many times what we think is us is a demonic attack. So, you know, so I know I went, I, when I was 20, I had a mental breakdown and I was in such depression, but then I realized that was not God's will for my life. And so that became my enemy, that depression. I was going to, I was getting my music degree at Grand Canyon at that time. And I had left, I went home. I couldn't, you know, I was incapacitated through depression. I felt like I fell, fell in a deep hole. And one day the Lord just spoke to me. I didn't know how to cast out demons or anything. He said, I want you to get up and go back to school. So I went and I sat in the recital room and I commanded my hands to be able to stop shaking and play. And I just took one finger and I could hit one key. Then I took two, then I could hit a chord. And I kept up every day. Depression is my enemy. This is not God's will for my life. I will not live in depression. And so finally what happened was at the end of that semester, I had memorized 25 pages of varying periods of music, uh, Rachmaninoff, Bach, Beethoven, Charity, whatever, and I played it flawlessly from memory because I didn't, I knew that Jezebel and Satan and the thief had no right to me, nor my destiny, nor my degree. And so I want to put some backbone in you this morning. Don't waller and, and just, you know, look at all your problems. Look up at the most high God. He is a great God. He is the almighty God. Pray around the property again. I tell you, somehow you have gotten on the target. You, are tar you have been targeted. But you know, just make the devil pay. One, one time I was preaching in another city, you know, I was in the revival in Argentina. I'm, I'm back next week there, in fact. And uh, uh, the, there was, a, uh, you know, we were like in a hotel room and some of the other pastors, uh, Dave Thompson and his wife were in the next room. And, you know, this spirit just appeared in our room. 
you know, and, and my, the young gal that was my translator, she was saying to me later, you got me when I was an innocent girl on the beach and told me, will you go and have all this fun and we're going to translate. You didn't tell me you were teaching a witchcraft for eight hours. <laughs> and I'm laughing. It's so rude, right? I'm just laughing. Anyway, but I prayed and I bound that spirit, said, you're never coming back to this room. But it went to the next room. And the next room. <laughs> The next morning, they got up and they were like, they were walking around. So we had to cover both rooms. But I want to say, I put an X on my door. And, it, you know, and what I want to happen is that, you know, the devil, when he's talking to the little demons in the morning, where are we going to deploy today? And they, if they look at my house in, in Texas, they're going to say, now let me tell you, little demons, do not go in that door. I tried it. And I'm telling you, I got so beat up. So we're putting an X on that door. So you put an X on your door. And you put it, you say, Satan, you are not coming near my family. You are not coming near my destiny. Jezebel, you have no place. You're not going to rob me. You're not going to kill me. You are not going to take from me. Don't run from Jezebel. Resist the devil and he will. Flee. Let's talk about uh, this Jezebel spirit will try to rob you, cause sickness, cause things to break down, will cause trouble in communication. But I want to say to you, God will give you wisdom. God will give you wisdom. And I want to say one thing very important is you cannot be alone in this battle. This is why we have to go to church. This is why we have to participate in church. This is why we have to spend our life understanding. Isaiah 65, 8 says, the new wine is found in the cluster. What does that mean? We have to work together. There's covenant relationships like with Pastor Sam and Ava. They could call me day or night anywhere in the world. And I would get up and pray for them anytime, anyway. You know, I have a friend, you know, Dutch Sheets or Chuck Pierce or, you know, I mean, we're in covenant, Edgardo Savoso, different ones, you know, and you need covenant friends and you have to make friends. The Bible says if you want to have friends, you have to be friendly. And so don't be isolated. Come to prayer meetings. Spend time because there's going to come a time when you might need somebody. There's going to come a time where the devil comes knocking on your door and maybe you're trying to push that door and not let him in, but you don't have the strength, but you need a couple of buddies. They're going to come and they're going to stand with you and they're going to, and they're going to keep that door shut. Amen. Amen. Well, let's shout for that. Hallelujah relationships this is what I feel a strength of this church is relationships and when you're in a relationship just somebody hurts your feeling and doesn't smile on you Sunday you don't just divorce okay it's covenant so I want to say that you spend time you make a commitment I am coming to church I'm not going to let anybody hurt my feelings. I'm not going to get offended because I want to tell you something. The spirit of offense is running wild right now. And it is a test of your maturity in Jesus Christ whether you get offended. Amen? So just stop that. Amen? Uh, Let's stand to our feet. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I think old Jesse is really shaking right now. We got some backbone going. We got some strength. Close your eyes a moment, please. If this morning you would say, I am not sure if I'm going to heaven if I died. I just want you to slip your hand up, would you?
When I was 18, I wasn't sure. Thank you. I see that hand. Anyone else? I see these hands. Anyone else? I'm just not sure. I want to just pray for you quickly right where you are. Let's all pray together, shall we do it? Let's say this out loud. I see those hands in the back. I see those hands in the back. Let's just pray with him. Can we say, dear God, out loud, dear God, today I ask Jesus into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. Father, forgive me of my sin. I want to be your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. Love you so much. Oh, the Lord's going to give you incredible financing. And, and I see everything's going to go up, social media, everything you need to do. And Jezebel's been after you, but you are a terror under her. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I love you guys. Go serve Jesus. Honor Mama Cindy, please. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Let's do something right now. Pastor Armando, help me out with logistics here. We, we want to, oh, wow. Just, you all lift up your hands. Lord, we take this word this incredibly powerful, transformative, igniting clarion call to put an X on our doors, to resist the spirit of Jezebel, every scheme of the enemy without exception. We declare by faith in the mighty name of Jesus, never again will Jezebel be able to rob, kill, or destroy anything related to the families that are in this place or streaming online. Never again. These two words, never again. In Jesus' name, if you believe it, shout never again. High five your neighbor. Tell them never again. Never again. Never again. Never again. Never again. Never again. again. In in full disclosure, there was no preliminary talk. The integrity of the prophetic, none, nada, not one thing. And so on accurate point, just unbelievable. Unbelievable what God is doing. The accuracy, unbelievable. This young lady here, I need, I just, I'm doing this to undergird as we're about to dismiss. You need to hear this. It'll undergird your faith. I'm, I'm, I'm in a place, I forget where it was, Malaysia, somewhere. A guy from Indonesia comes over, the Indonesia story, and he comes over and says, so you know Dr. Jacobs? And I go, yes, that's Mama Cindy to me. And he goes, yeah, well, interesting story, because she says, I, you know, some of the stuff we've done politically with different administrations. He said, well, uh, this is what I am in the Indonesian government. And he gave his role. And he's a Christian very high row in the Indonesian government. And I went like, that's pretty amazing. I wasn't aware of that. He went like, yes, you want to hear a story? I go, go ahead. When I was a young man in a conference, Dr. Cindy Jacobs called me out from the crowd and laid out everything I'm doing, including the position I'm holding in the Indonesian government today. Y'all need to understand, there's a fine line between the prophetic and the pathetic. But when it is prophetic and it is of God, it will come to pass. Do not despise the word of the Lord. Do not despise the word of the Lord. Sacramento, California, God has destiny for this city and for this state. We're gonna see more people baptized, more people come to Jesus in the next few months. And in the month of May, we're gonna have one incredible baptism weekend May 18th and 19th, 
Over 3,000 churches have already signed on to seeing people baptized the same weekend. And it's not an attempt to break the Guinness World Record on baptisms, but we're gonna see more people baptized in one day in the state of California than ever before in California's history. So get ready for that. Let's do one more thing. If, if, Armando, help me out with the QR code. Put the QR code on the screen, please, team. If you wanna sow a seed into what you just received, if you wanna sow a seed into the ministry of Dr. Jacobs, take out your phones and scan the QR code right now. Do it right now. I promise you it's going to go right to her. Integrity. It's going to go right to her. Go up there. In the cash app note, just put Dr. Jacobs or, or Mama Cindy. Put that right now. In Jesus' name. Right on your phone. In the name of Jesus. 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 Amen. Amen beautiful. Join hands with your neighbors. Mama, when you were ministering, just the, the story, how many felt a breakthrough deliverance regarding anxiety and depression? How many have felt pressure in your mind with thoughts and ideas? And, and under this anointing, that comes to an end right here, right now. Does anybody here have enough faith? Is there enough faith in this room? For you to speak regarding depression, anxiety, fear, the following two words. Somebody, if there's enough faith, can you just say never again? Never again. Do you have any idea what you just said? Do it again. Say never again. never again. So never again will depression ever again reign over your life. Anxiety, fear, these things come to an end right here, right now. Mark the date. It happened today on this sacred day in this sacred space by the authority of Jesus. Somebody say never again. You're joining hands with your neighbors. Join us Wednesday for our small group community here in this place. Men, women, children, youth, young adults. We gather every Wednesday in small groups and throughout the week in different parts of Northern California. Join a small group today. We will be back next Sunday. We continue the gospel of John. We go from one level of glory to the next. We love you. We bless you. Here's the benediction. May the strength of the Father, the grace of the Son, the anointing of the Holy Spirit make this week the week that Jezebel gets the biggest migraine she's ever had in her entire life. Hey, new season. Let's do one thing together. We're going to go from glory to glory. Are you ready? Let's do one thing together. What is it? Let's go change the world. We love you. Let's do this. Greet one another in Jesus' name.